Hi, my name is Dr. Dana Ergas, and today I'll talk about obsessive compulsive disorder and treatment for OCD, which is exposure and response prevention, the most effective treatment for OCD. Specifically, I'll focus a little bit on creating an exposure hierarchy. So what is OCD? Basically contains two components, the first being obsessive thoughts. These are intrusive, persistent, unpleasant, and unwanted thoughts. They tend to increase your anxiety or discomfort. And the second component of OCD is compulsions. These are any sort of behavior that you do to reduce the distress and um, anxiety caused by the obsessive thoughts. These might be actions like counting, checking, cleaning. Um, they could also be mental acts like repeating comforting phrases in your mind or reassurance seeking. Now, compulsions are intended to reduce your distress, but the trouble with them is they actually end up causing problems of their own. So, for example, let's say I had um, intrusive thoughts about starting a fire at home. So I might get nervous after I cook a meal and turn on the stove. After I turn it off, I might then leave the kitchen and think, oh, am I certain I really turned the stove off? Is it possible that you know when I turned around and walked away, I might have actually bumped the stove and it turned back on? And so I go back into the kitchen to check and to see if the stove is really off. And I see that it's off, so I walk away. But as I walk away, the doubt starts to creep back in. That's an example that doubt and the, the second guessing, those are these intrusive thoughts, the obsessions. Me going back to the kitchen and constantly checking the stove, that's the compulsion. And we can see how this might become difficult over time because compulsions can be time consuming and energy draining. If I engage in a cycle of repetitive compulsions, I might you know, spend hours after cooking checking the stove and I might miss out on plans or if I'm you know, making breakfast, I might be late to work. And so the compulsions really create problems of their own. Instead of engaging in the compulsion, we can actually just learn to tolerate the discomfort and learn to tolerate the distress. And actually over time, your brain learns, hey, wait a minute, I don't have to engage in these compulsive behaviors in order to feel okay. So let's go back to my earlier example. Let's say I um, have just turned off my stove and I start to walk away. And the OCD doubt creeps in and says, oh, are you sure? Are you really sure you turned it off? Is it possible that the stove, you know, you bumped into it and it, it um, turned back on? My compulsions would want me to go back and to check. But that reassurance and that checking, that comfort only lasts for a short amount of time. So instead, what I can actually do is keep walking away from the kitchen. I can sit on my couch. And after five minutes, maybe my distress is, is still pretty high. But what about after an hour? two hours, four hours, I'm probably not still going to be thinking about it, or at least not as uncomfortable by this doubt and this um, intrusive thought. And so that's really the key component to treatment with OCD. We want to approach the things that make us uncomfortable and learn to sit with that discomfort and tolerate it without engaging in the compulsions. So how do we treat OCD? Exposure and response prevention is the most effective treatment for OCD. It basically helps you approach the things that OCD wants you to avoid, and also it prevents you from engaging in these repetitive and time-consuming compulsions. So for example, a therapist might ask a client, what does OCD take from you? And with my example from earlier, I might say, well, it prevents me from, from cooking, it prevents me from baking, um, after I make a meal for myself, it causes me to stay in my house for long amounts of time because I'm, I'm worried that a fire might start or something bad might happen. So I have to stay home to check and make sure. I might also say it prevents me from lighting candles around my house because when I do, I have trouble going to bed because I keep wanting to check to make sure that the candles are out. And so in treatment for OCD, we start by identifying these activities that OCD has taken away from you. These activities, they become the goals for treatment. And ultimately, they make up what's called the exposure hierarchy. So what is an exposure hierarchy? It's basically just a list of different activities that increase your discomfort. They bring on the intrusive thoughts. So in treatment, you'll actually work together with your provider to collaborate on creating this list. 
And many of the ideas come from items that you've actually identified and said, hey, this is really difficult for me to do, and it creates a lot of problems in my life. So let's go back to the earlier example. On my exposure hierarchy, I might say, I'd really like to be able to make myself dinner, turn off the stove, and move on with the rest of my evening. I'd like to be able to bake a cake midday, walk away from the kitchen, and leave the house, run some errands. I'd like to be able to light candles before I go to bed without having to walk through my house and make sure all of them are off several times and go to bed you know, hours later than I plan to. So you and the therapist would work together and create a list of all of these activities. Then you'd go through that list and you'd start to rank each item on the list from zero being, this doesn't cause me any discomfort, to 10 being, this makes me really, really uncomfortable and anxious. After you go through each item, giving it a different score, again from zero to 10, you then can rank these items from least distressing to most distressing. And that's essentially your exposure hierarchy. So once the client and therapist have collaborated and worked together to create a list of items to put on that hierarchy, the challenge then in therapy is to figure out how can we do these things together in session to learn to acclimate to that discomfort. So one of the important things that I always start off by talking about with clients is that you are never forced to do anything in session. All of these items on the hierarchy, they come from what the client ultimately wants to be able to do. So you might be wondering, how do I get access to a stove or candles or things like that in session? And one of my favorite parts of treatment with OCD is how creative you and your client can really get. So let's take this candle example. We usually start with an item that's kind of in the middle of the client's hierarchy. So maybe something they've rated a three, four, or five. Something that is a little bit out of their comfort zone, but also feels manageable. So my client and I might both have a candle in session. And we might light those candles and then blow them out together. But this time, when we, when we blow out the candle, we might either turn our backs away from the candle, or we might actually stand up and walk out of the therapy room. This will start that doubt, where the client might say, oh, did I really blow out the candle? I'm not certain. I don't want to lay your office on fire. You know, I don't, I don't want to deal with all that. I don't want to cause anybody harm. And that doubt will start to set in. And what we do in therapy is we just sit there. We sit with the doubt and we don't go back in the room and look at the candle or you know, turn our backs and, and see if it's really blown out. We just sit and acclimate to this discomfort. I always do these exposures with the clients and that's, what, that's the role that your therapist will take on. You collaborate and you're in this together. And so as we go through different items on the hierarchy, we repeat them over and over and over until the client no longer feels that increase in discomfort and that distress from the intrusive thought. So we practice these things in session, and actually the client will practice them at home as well, over and over and over. And this gives your brain a time to really acclimate to the discomfort and learn that the feared outcome really isn't likely to happen. If you blew out the candle, you probably really blew out that candle. The important thing to remember with obsessive compulsive disorder working through exposure and response prevention and creating an exposure hierarchy is that the goal here is to really learn to feel comfortable in the things that make you uncomfortable so that OCD doesn't have to take stuff away from you. It doesn't have to control your life. If you'd like to learn more, please check out our other videos. Again, this is Dr. Dana Aragas with the Lucan Center.